Hello, I'm George Klinsing, Professor of Chemical Engineering at the University of Pittsburgh. The focus of my research has been in the field of solids processing, and over the years I've collected a veritable treasure of homemade video examples of that work, which I like to share. As you might imagine, solids processing is a challenging area for design of industrial facilities that requires the handling and treatment of solids in manufacturing operations in a variety of industrial settings. Plants that utilize only gases and liquids have been able to use basic principles of physics and chemistry to design and construct a plant that has a high degree of reliability in the use of those materials. Plants which process solids in their operation, on the other hand, face unique challenges which our research has attempted to address. In our laboratory over the years, we have been exploring a variety of phenomena in the area of solids processing. We have explored such parameters as particle size and distribution, electrostatic behavior, voidages, particle shapes, and many more. Two such materials show the wide spectrum of properties, cement and polymer pellets. We have focused on the unique behaviors of solids and how those behaviors relate to the design challenges for the processing of solids in industrial operations. Here's some videos we gathered over the years of that research. Avalanching is the process often associated with snow and the dangerous consequences of the release of large forces rolling down the mountainside. Avalanching in solid processing is present when there is an outdoor storage of such commodities as coal and ore. These piles of solids also present dangerous situations if similar forces are released. Within the bin or hopper, one can also find avalanches, but generally speaking, these are confined within the vessel and cannot cascade. This video shows an apparatus that we constructed in order to deliver a steady stream of solid particles of different properties, from a hopper to a conveyor belt and then falling to form a pile of solids which would grow in size both in height and diameter. As we focus in on the pile we note the angle of repose and then begin to see small perturbations on the surface as the particles are delivered. The pile is formed on a platform that was connected to a way cell in order to measure the mass of solids in the pile. As particles break loose from the surface, they can fall off the platform into a container where the amount can be weighed and quantified. We can relate this process using fractal analysis and show that a pattern can be defined depending on the characteristics of the solid particles being studied. To explore bin flow, there are some simple experiments that can be developed. This particular apparatus comes from a portable unit developed at the University of Wollongong. The apparatus can show that the size of the container or bin support a large portion of the total weight of the solids contained within. This is counterintuitive in nature since we know that the pressure at the bottom of a column of liquid is directly related to the total height of the liquid in the column. To conduct this experiment, we first took a thin sheet of facial tissue and covered the bottom of the column by holding the tissue in place with a rubber band. At first, this would appear to be foolhardy from our experiences with liquids. Using 1 8 inch alunima spheres, we began filling the column and continued adding particles, which increased both the volume and weight. The paper tissue is seen to support the entire column of solids, thus confirming the importance of the design of the sides of bins and hoppers. The lateral forces and the support taken by the walls of the container are extensive dictating that care must be taken in the design of the strength of the sides of these vessels. Another companion experiment with solid flow 
is seen on the right side of this apparatus. Bird seed was added to the column to form a plug. But in this case, the column was fitted with a piston attached to a wire leaving the column and wound around a pulley, which is attached to a scale at the top of the container. In this experiment, while using the scale, we can measure the force necessary to move the plug. Adding more bird seed to increase the plug length causes the force to increase in a nonlinear fashion. At one point, we find that it's very difficult to move the plug. In order to enhance the operation, a small amount of air is fed into the bottom of the column. This airstream will fluidize the bird seed, increasing the size of the plug, but also lubricating the system by reducing the force of the bird seed on the walls of the column. The force needed to move the plug with the air addition is considerably reduced, and one can transport the solids in a plug format. Fluidization of solids is a technique of adding air to a column of solids in varying degrees. As one increases the airflow, the solid gas flow is seen to cause considerable mixing and circulation. Fluidization is an excellent process for keeping the temperature of a reaction constant. The field of fluidization is extensive with various studies on the conditions, bubbles produced, and interchange of mass, heat, and momentum. The dominant topic of our research lab over the years has been pneumatic conveying. Pneumatic conveying has been generally classified into dilute and dense phase, with no good boundary for classification. Even though dilute phase transport has been implemented and studied for years, there are still areas of concern in the design and behavior of this transport. System designs for dense phase pneumatic conveying are even more complicated and difficult to scale. We are exploring more basic and fundamental phenomena in this area and hoping we'll be able to increase our knowledge to provide more reliable designs. This video shows the typical type of flow for dilute phase transport. Various types of materials, each with unique properties, can flow in dilute phase. Here, we see the dilute phase flow of polyester, a typical polymer. As the velocity decreases, we note that particles are deposited on the bottom of the pipe in a process called saltation. Generally speaking, it is desirable to convey or transport materials above this condition. In this video, we can see the unique flow behavior of the polymer polyolefin, which has a soft, pliable constituency. The curious thing about this flow is the amount of spin, rebound, and backward flow seen in the video. This material requires more energy to convey because of the increased friction due to the wall and particle interactions. Conveying fibrous material is a particular challenge. Injecting this material into a conveying line requires chopping up the material by passing the fibrous mass through a fan. This video shows the fibrous material flowing through the pipe, but when the flow stops, we can see the clumps of material which are being conveyed. Characterizing these clumps is difficult, especially since we find that these clumps undergo considerable rotation in the flow process. In this video, we see pneumatic conveying of dense phase material in the form of a solid plug or moving mass of material. We've recorded the movement both at regular speed and in slow motion. In slow motion, we can see the deposited layer on the bottom of the pipe. In order to have uniform flow, this deposited layer is imperative. On closer inspection at the beginning of the plug, we see how the particles impact the deposited layer 
and consume this layer into the moving plug. A tracer analysis of this behavior confirms the phenomena as evidenced by the movement of the green dye. This information is crucial to developing a model for predicting the behavior of dense phase plug motion. In this video, we clearly see the flying front of the plug as the particles are picked up. Conversely, we see the trailing part of the plug as the particles leave. Transporting particles by pneumatic conveying requires the ability to move through all kinds of geometries rather than simply moving in a straight line. Frequently a bend or change in direction is necessary for a whole variety of reasons. A T-bend has met with considerable adoption in the transport of solids, especially considering advantages such as limiting energy loss and decreasing wear to the pipe. This video shows the behavior of the flow through the T-bend for dilute phase transport. The rationale for using the T-bend is that the particles are colliding against themselves and they move through the bend and cause less erosion and wear to the pipe. In addition, because the T-bend abruptly changes the flow, there is not a prolonged interaction with the wall of the bend and the energy recovery is deemed to be more efficient. Our research has given us a basic understanding of solids processing. Fortunately, the fruits of this research can often be directly applied to manufacturing settings in a number of industries. In this context, the problem-solving challenges we and our research colleagues face will continue to drive our efforts in the future. Thank you.